action power was first applied to flight, Aerojet General Corporation has led in rocket propulsion. But further, its concepts and products carry man ever closer to mastery of the seas below and of space above. They include space projects, spacecraft and their guidance and control systems, underwater and surface marine technology, limited warfare programs, revolutionary structural materials, architect engineering and construction management, electronics, automation, nuclear energy. In these and other activities, Aerojet employs more than 33,000 people. Plants are located at Azusa, Covina, Downey, Sacramento, San Ramon, all in California, and at Frederick, Maryland. Offices and field service units are maintained in many parts of the United States and in Europe. Fountainhead of the company's growth has been the Azusa plant, where its first small rocket motor shops were set up in 1942. The eight operating divisions of the plant exemplify the company's expansion and diversification. Work leading to nuclear hydrogen engines began many years ago at the instigation of Aerojet's founder, Dr. Theodore von Karman. It is a great satisfaction for me as one of the co-founders of Aerojet that Aerojet foresaw the problems of the coming age and it is prepared for the solution of the theoretical and practical problems connected with manufacturing and applications of nuclear rockets. To press the probing of space, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the Atomic Energy Commission named Aerojet prime contractor for the first space power plant actuated by the heat of fission. Development of space-age materials with ever higher strength-to-weight ratios centers in the Structural Materials Division. Ablative skirts and nozzles of glass and asbestos with resinous binders are being made for rocket motors, both solid and liquid propellant types. Fabrication of rocket engine skirts by glass filament winding eliminates requirements for bulky and heavy hardware, increasing the range and decreasing the cost of missiles. Subjected to the high temperatures of burning propellant, the interior surface of the ablative Titan transition skirt turns first to liquid, then to gas during firing, as in this example of the ablative process. While the inner surface gasifies, the remainder stays relatively cool, thus eliminating the entire cooling system of pump, metal tubing, and unburned propellant serving as coolant. Similar principles are applied to nozzles and exit cones of pressed and sintered graphite, tungsten, and other materials. Temperatures exceeding 14,000 degrees Fahrenheit are achieved in the plasmatron in which ablative performance is tested. Large solid rocket motor chambers also are made by roving glass filament bonded with epoxy resins. Glass filament chambers weigh 45% less than those of steel. A million and a half miles of filament goes into one of these. The chamber for Polaris 3 is completed with a hoop wrap. When it has been oven cured, it will be ready for loading and firing. From the Astrionics Division come space-oriented electronic, electromechanical, and electro-optical systems and subsystems for detection, early warning, tracking, fire control, and space navigation. The Radiation Airborne Measurement Program, Project RAMP, is being carried forward for the Advanced Research Projects Agency by Astrionics under the direction of the Air Force Systems Command. RAMP is a program to measure radiation characteristics of ballistic missiles during powered phases of their flight. In a dome with quartz windows on top of a plane is a tracker which automatically keeps various measuring devices locked on the same target or the same part of the target. From Wright-Patterson Air Force Base at Dayton, the modified KC-135 aircraft 
flies to the area of Cape Canaveral when a missile launch is scheduled. Inside the aircraft, men control the equipment used to collect data for future reduction and analysis. The plane awaits the missile at 40,000 feet or more above clouds. Extension of ramp to the Pacific Missile Range is imminent, as is substantial increase and refinement of equipment. Many years of research are behind the Astrionics Division's production of equipment now in production. An extensive array of computers serve Astrionics and other divisions. Optics research and manufacture are essential to end products utilizing radiant energy in the ultraviolet, visible, and infrared spectra. Here, field lenses have been made as small as the head of a pin. Materials have included fine optical glass, pure sapphire, germanium, silicon, arsenic trisulfide. An egg crate base provides a mirror of high strength with a minimum of weight. When shaped and polished, the mirror will be coated with a film of gold in the division's shops. Module and high density techniques also go into electronics components for space vehicles, where weight and bulk are vital factors. From Aerojet's beginning, chemical research has been pressed without intermission. Creation of propellant formulae progressively increasing rocket power is one primary objective of the chemical division, the largest group of chemical research people in the missile industry. One result of their work has been a year-by-year -year advance in the specific impulse of propellants from those of the earliest motors for jet-assisted aircraft takeoff to the powerful fuels for today's Minuteman, Titan, Beaumark, Tartar, Hawk, Genie, Sparrow, and many others. The first trial of a new formula is small. For experimental propellant formulations delivering specific impulses not yet attained in operational rocket engines, the laboratories utilize remote handling equipment. Doubly refractive polymers in flexible forms that may be bonded to solid materials are a significant advance in studies of stress-strain relationships, which now may be measured by color spectra movement. Economical desalination of water is an age-old dream fast becoming a necessity. The chemical division is engaged in a substantial effort to solve this problem using principles never before applied to it. The process being developed is potentially capable of producing potable water with the expenditure of only 11 kilowatts of energy per 1,000 gallons. Analysis of lunar chemistry will be made by a chromatographic device after a soft landing. The purpose is to detect and identify components of the moon's surface which may be used to help support human life there. The device will gasify the volatile portions of what it takes in, analyze the gases, and signal its findings back to Earth. Experimental extraction of water and minerals from rock is part of the program for determining what resources man may utilize on the lunar surface. A sample of rock, basalt, baked to remove surface moisture, is placed under a vacuum jar in an arc image furnace. On the moon, solar energy will serve. As the heat of the furnace is concentrated on it, vapor from the decomposing rock is drawn off to be condensed by cold. Mirrors above the furnace reflect on a screen the process of decomposition. From this sample of hard basalt taken from a dead volcano in the Mojave Desert, the water in the ampoule was recovered. It is about 1% by volume of the rock decomposed. 
fundamental work in physics, in thermodynamics, and in life sciences is carried out by the Advanced Research Division's effort directed toward making life supportable for man in space. Algae, potential sources for man's food and oxygen. Strains of algae propagated in the laboratory are material for experimental research. The end result will be hardware to grow algae in space for conversion to man's needs. Other studies are being performed on such basic life processes as light production in luminescent bacteria. Dishes and flasks of the light-giving bacteria are sufficiently bright to be recorded on film in complete darkness. Small amounts of materials accumulating in air being breathed by astronauts may have unknown effects. What those effects are will be determined by inhabitants of these cages. Two aerojet divisions are devoted to expanding the uses made of the seas and to maintaining freedom to pass over them. The surface of the oceans is a highway, well mapped and long familiar. But exploration of the depth of the waters and of the sea bottom has been fragmentary. It has hardly begun. Control of the surface of the oceans has been held for centuries by the nations of the West. Today, exploitation of the untapped riches of the sea bottom has a direct bearing on the economies of the nation and of the world. And control of the vast subsurface areas of darkness and tremendous pressures is a critical requirement of national defense. A fast, deep-running torpedo incorporating radically new design concepts has been developed and tested by the Torpedo Division. The Mark 46, first torpedo driven by a solid propellant, may be launched from tubes of surface vessels, by rocket carrier, or from aircraft. It is designed to seek, to find, to overtake and destroy swift submarines. The Oceanics Division's studies of the sea begin at home, in a model basin at Azusa. Wave action is on a scale of 1 to 100 during an experiment relating to harbors. Surface and underwater motion in any degree of complexity desired may be obtained in wave flumes, where a camera records the reaction of buoyant shapes. A ring channel tests models and prototypes at speeds to 100 knots, while instruments measure thrust or drag, lift, pitching moment, pressures and temperature, and acoustic data. Direct application of rocket propulsion to underwater missiles is tested successfully in the ring channel. A system of propulsion for surface craft designed and made by the Oceanics Division eliminates cavitation by driving water through jets in a revolving impeller. It is called a hydrocket. A hood is lowered for instant reversing action. Ordinary small marine engines drive the boat's hydrockets. Surface vessels of any size of float may be propelled by the hydrocket with increased efficiency at higher speeds from the same kind of power plants that now turn propellers. A combination of hydrocket propulsion and hydrofoil flotation is prepared for testing in the open sea off Newport Beach, California. The Power Equipment Division provides systems for converting nuclear, solar, and chemical energy to electrical power, with emphasis on its use in space vehicles. A nuclear reactor is simulated by a furnace in experiments during development of the 30 kilowatt SNAP-8 turboelectric space vehicle power system for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The reactor coolant, a liquid potassium-sodium alloy, is raised to high temperatures and pumped to a heat exchanger where its thermal energy vaporizes mercury. The mercury vapor then drives a turbine. An experiment in the Aerojet General Nucleonics Laboratories at San Ramon shows mercury vapor being recondensed after passing through the turbine. Both the sodium-potassium alloy and mercury are recycled through closed loops. The entire system may be started and stopped on signal from the Earth and will operate for a year unattended in space. Electrical power in the SNAP-AID system will be generated by a brushless alternator of aerojet design manufactured by the Power Equipment Division. This alternator varies in size from a 500 kVA model for a ground power unit to one furnishing a small fraction of that power. Studies now in progress will lead to nuclear turboelectric units providing 2,000 kilowatts of power for future space vehicles. 
Aerojet's alternator has no brushes, commutators, or rotating windings and is simple and reliable. Solar heat collectors developed by the Power Equipment Division for lightweight power conversion systems will utilize the abundant solar energy present in space to provide electric power. The Aerojet General Nucleonics plant at San Ramon near San Francisco is a center of design, development and production of special purpose reactors, of nuclear fuels and equipment, and of research in nuclear physics and advanced materials. A program of experiment with a gas-cooled reactor of San Ramon design and fabrication has been conducted by the company for the Atomic Energy Commission at its Idaho test facility. The gas-cooled reactor was part of a project leading to development for the Army of the ML-1 reactor, the first mobile reactor for electrical power generation. The unique core of the ML-1 reactor is made at San Ramon. The power conversion unit, which the reactor will drive by means of a closed cycle nitrogen loop, was developed, assembled, and tested by the power equipment division at Azusa. The ML-1 power plant can be set up and in operation in 12 hours to meet all electrical needs of an army base. The structural parts of the reactor were made at the Downey plant. The ML-1 will produce 500 kilowatts for more than a year without refueling. Produced in three plants, the ML-1 is an example of Aerojet's total approach to systems management. The reactor and the power conversion unit may be moved from site to site by standard transportation. New frontiers in space power reactors and systems technology are being crossed at San Ramon. Rubidium metal, once a laboratory curiosity, is being boiled and pumped through a loop to evaluate it as a working fluid for space power generation. Hydrazine is produced from ammonia in a nuclear reactor by a fissiochemical process that may lower the cost of hydrazine by four-fifths. Fissiochemistry promises to make powerful and expensive chemicals of many kinds cheap and abundant. At the Downey plant, with 600,000 square feet under roof, is an extensive array of machinery for the fabrication of ordnance products and aircraft, rocket engine, and missile components. At nearby Fullerton, the Downey operation has an additional 500,000 square feet, a total of more than a million for the three Downey operating divisions. The Ordnance Division at Downey is devoted to the sophisticated manipulation of force. This division developed the T-45 and the T-46 warheads for the Nike Hercules ground-to-air missile. Safety and arming devices of the division are found in warheads, missiles, and space vehicles. There are 23 Ordnance Division items in the Thor Abel space probe alone. Ordnance laboratories and test areas, the most complete in American industry, range over 500 acres in the Chino Hills, 30 miles from Downey. Extensive instrumentation monitors tests and experiments. Ultra-high-speed cameras record explosions at rates up to 4,300,000 frames per second. Events filmed in small fractions of a second appear thus. X-ray penetrates heat and smoke to obtain photographic records. Forming metal shapes by explosive power is a process perfected at Chino. These techniques have proven reliable and accurate for even hard to form metals such as titanium. Loading and assembly of fuses, detonators, igniters and other ordnance devices is performed at an isolated facility near Riverside. Each production lot of detonators is qualified to a very high level of reliability by destructive tests of substantial quantities. The Aeronautical Division developed and tested the SD-2 multipurpose drone system for the Army. For surveillance, the drone carries optical, radar, and infrared sensors, which gather, store, and transmit battlefield surveillance information. Two solid rocket boosters furnish power for zero-length launch from a standard Army trailer. Controlled in flight either by an onboard programmer or from the ground by radio, the SD-2 system is being developed to provide early and accurate information to Army commanders. 
Repeated flights at the Army's Yuma test station have demonstrated that the drone can be recovered and reused within acceptable limits of organizational maintenance. The manufacturing division provides manpower and machines to fabricate parts and complete products for other aerojet divisions and performs prime contract work for government agencies. Chambers for Polaris rocket motors are produced here. When shipped to the solid rocket plant at Sacramento, chambers for the second stage of Minuteman are ready for loading. This welder is one of many machine tools designed and built by engineers of the manufacturing division. The first mechanized production line for missile chambers is in operation at Downey. The chambers are for the Hawk, the Army's air defense weapon that tracks and destroys missiles in flight. Quality control is maintained by a system of rigid inspection and recording of the smallest deviation in fine tolerances. Inspection charts furnish information that anticipates wear of machine parts, which can then be replaced before tolerances are exceeded. The Atlantic Division at Frederick, Maryland uses a systems engineering approach in solving complex materials handling problems by applying automation, as in this model letter sorter. Parcel sorters developed for the United States Post Office Department are installed at St. Louis and Miami. They guide packages automatically to the proper mail bags. Operators key in the package's destinations before they are fed to the conveyor, and a memory unit actuates a diverter at the proper moment. Three operators are able to handle 80,000 parcels a day, destined to more than 1,000 addresses. Other units not only sort packages, but greatly increase the ease and speed of handling bags at postal terminals. For the age of space, Aerojet's architect engineers of the Atron division at Covina have provided the ultimate integration of architecture, engineering, fabrication, instrumentation, and construction management. In 1947, Atron did the master planning, design, and instrumentation for an experimental rocket engine test station at Edwards Air Force Base. The stands had to handle engines with thrust up to 60,000 pounds, in its time a revolutionary advance. Twelve years later, Atron designed a test stand for Edwards to accommodate quadruple engines of six million pounds thrust. The Saturn test stand for the Marshall Space Flight Center at Huntsville also is of Atron design and engineering. For the Atomic Energy Commission, the division has designed and is supervising construction of the first test stand for nuclear rocket engines. Located in the Commission's test area in Nevada, the test system is operated entirely by remote control. A model indicates the method by which the engine is placed in the stand and is shielded during firing. In the years of transition from the age of missiles to the age of space, Atron has left its mark nearly everywhere that missiles and space vehicles are tested and launched, including master planning for the Pacific Missile Range with instrumentation and range safety system. The division designed and supervised construction of a general tire and rubber company plant at Odessa, Texas, and its electronically automated production system. The largest rocket facilities in the free world, Aerojet's liquid and solid rocket plants on 18,000 acres near Sacramento, were entirely designed by Atron. Buildings, test stands, processing facilities, techniques, instrumentation. The liquid rocket plant develops and produces highly successful first and second stage engines for intercontinental ballistic missiles. Both the original Titan I engines using liquid oxygen and RP-1 fuel and the advanced Titan II using storable liquid propellants. Titan I engines are flight tested at the Atlantic Missile Range prior to becoming operational. Engines for the advanced Titan II ICBM were developed in Sacramento for incorporation in complete missile systems. Operational Titan IIs can be stored fully loaded in a silo for several years, then launched directly from the silo. A successful full-scale silo launching test was conducted at Vandenberg Air Force Base using a Titan I missile to simulate the Titan II. A 35-knot wind tilts the rising missile, which straightens itself before clearing the launching structure.
More advanced liquid engines are under development, unique propulsion systems for space vehicles, and a satellite rendezvous vehicle, pulse motors for attitude control, others for deep space missions. The experimental engine being fired incorporates several advanced design concepts, including an ablative fiberglass resin bonded thrust chamber. The Able Star upper stage is powered by the first rocket engine ever restarted in space. Aerojet began work with liquid hydrogen as a fuel in 1947. Tests are run with a Titan size experimental engine with liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen propellant. Thrust is nearly 200,000 pounds, extrapolated to vacuum conditions with a 40 to 1 nozzle area ratio. A liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine for initial use in the second and third stages of the NOVA program for NASA will have a thrust of 1,200,000 pounds. Liquid propellant boosters now projected are so large they cannot be transported over land routes. However, they may readily be assembled in dry docks, towed to sea, raised to launch position, fueled in place by tankers, and launched from the water. After separation, the booster will be lowered to the ocean by parachute and retro rocket. Recovery for reuse is the key to the system's economy. Feasibility of sea launch for liquid rocket vehicles has been demonstrated off Point Magoo, California by a modified Aero B Junior, Aerojet's widely used upper atmosphere sounding rocket. The flight tests included return of the Aero B to the water by parachute and its recovery. As part of research programs to advance liquid rocket technology, the Special Projects Division of the liquid rocket plant at Azusa demonstrates action of storable propellants and various types of injectors in test chambers having a heavy plexiglass side. The glass permits high-speed photographic and data analysis of the injection and combustion processes in cutaway engines. This test was photographed at 4,000 frames per second, the actual event occurring 166 times as fast as it appears to be. Test hardware is related to space engine programs. Controlled variable thrust has been built into liquid engines. An engine for a high-speed research sled is designed to operate at various thrust levels, from 50,000 to 150,000 pounds. With it, the sled can duplicate any desired velocity acceleration pattern within design limits. Variable thrust, now a proven concept, can be utilized in future spacecraft to maintain given acceleration and speed. Of more than 700,000 solid propellant motors delivered by Aerojet, 101,364 field firings show reliability of 99.95%, a record unequaled in the American rocket industry. Among the solid rocket plant's products are motors for the Polaris missile, for the Genie, the single chamber dual thrust Hawk motor, those for the Sparrow. Tartar. The Gar 9. Scout. And many others. And the Minuteman second stage. In its first test, the Minuteman went down the Atlantic Missile Range to a target area more than 4,500 miles from its launch. The only fully activated continuous mix solid propellant facility in the country is in operation at the solid rocket plant. As designed and built by the Atron division, hazardous chemicals are handled by automatic machinery. The system ensures uniform quality in complex high density propellants of high specific impulse having excellent low temperature performance. The quality of propellants in process is tested by the most advanced methods available in the chemical industry. Controlled at every stage from this bunker, propellant can be turned out by the continuous mix plant faster and at lower cost than is possible by batch mixing. Propellant in the form of slurry 
is hauled from the continuous mix to the casting building, where large solid motor cases, such as those for Polaris, Minuteman, and segmented motors, are filled by direct transfer to the case in which it is cured. In the future, motors of 30-foot diameter will be loaded in this way. Metal parts of the large motor were made in the shops of the solid rocket plant. Chamber cases are hardened in a gantry heat treat furnace, one of the largest in the United States. Very large rocket motors are made in segments so they may be transported over the curves and bridges of roads and railways. Quickly joined together under field conditions, the segments are assembled in the number a specific mission requires. 31 million pounds seconds total impulse is delivered by this motor of 100 inch diameter. Segmented motors of much larger size and thrust are in work. This is the picture of Aerojet. It has shown a concentration within one company of the arts and sciences by which man is attempting to plumb the mysteries of the seas and explore the vast reaches of space. The success of Aerojet's projects and products rests on the skills, the imagination, the experience and integrity of the people who make up the company. In the past, they have done much to shape the present. In the present, they are shaping the future.